Hi, I want to talk about the Precy and the strategy and how I'm grading those and things you should be working toward. I could do this during our lecture, but I would rather devote the lecture time, the synchronous class time to discussion. And so quick video, send me questions if you have them. Um, by the way, I'm going to start putting fewer grading notes on your assignments, but you will start getting grades. When you're unsure about how to do this assignment or you're unsure about why you're getting the grade you're get, getting, visit the Writing Center or see me during my office hours. Now, in the Pricey, just a few notes, do not use quotations without quotation marks. Develop an awareness of unique phrasing because sometimes authors say things in a very unique way, a very specific to them way. And if you're using that phrase, then you are plagiarizing. Now I know that the Precy isn't allowed to have quotation marks, which means that you know, like there's a tendency to add those. And anyways, the author said it so nicely. That means you need to develop the ability to paraphrase to describe what an author is doing in a way that does not use the author's ideas. To do this, remember that verbs are your friends. Um, develop and keep a list of strong verbs with you when you're writing. Um, the, that way you can use them to describe the most meaningful things that an author is doing in a text. The other thing I wanna say is read really, really carefully. These four sentences require you to know this argument. And if you don't know it, then you're going to communicate ideas that don't reflect it well. This is gonna be super important as we move into research. Sometimes students assume that I haven't read all the research and there I can't possibly know if they're um, reflecting the idea, author's ideas adequately or maybe they just don't understand them themselves. Please be assured that I do double check because I want you to develop strong ethical means of argumentation and strong ethical ways of representing other people's ideas. So before you write your precy, make sure that you understand what is the argument, what are the claims, how is the author developing that argument and who the author's audience is. Another thing to think about as you're writing a precy is make sure you're writing for an audience who has not read the texts. How can you summarize the text in a meaningful way so that someone who has not read this can say, oh, that's how they build their argument. Obviously, just listing a lot of rhetorical strategies isn't going to do that kind of work. Um, let's say you're doing a compare and contrast. You say, by using compare and contrast. That's not helpful. But if you say, by comparing this thing to this thing and showing blank, you know, I've not talking about a specific text by using a metaphor that illustrates this. Um, how can you show the most relevant parts of the text? Authors do a lot of things. They cite evidence. But if you can't talk about how that evidence is meaningful, then it's like, so what? All scholarly works use evidence. So that isn't descriptive. You've got to illustrate how the author builds that argument. Let me talk about the Precy sentences individually. This is the Precy sentence, and it requires a lot of information. Have you provided all that information? What is this text really about? What is the focus of this text? What is the main topic? Now, authors are gonna talk about a lot of things. That means you have to be really clear what the main topic is. If you are 
If you are looking at an academic text, the author has likely told you explicitly what this paper will be about. If you're looking at a popular text, then you have to look more closely. What is the argument statement? Again, if this is an academic research paper, there will be an explicit argument statement. What is that? Find the main point and paraphrase that. An argument is a complete sentence, a complete assertion and not a topic. You know it's a topic if you've got a noun phrase, but this is a developed sentence. And it's not just a sentence that has a what, it also has a so what, or why does it matter? Sentence two, this is a list of three things, maybe two, maybe four, that describe the most important things involved in developing that argument. The one that you stated in the previous sentence. List those things descriptively for an audience who hasn't read the text. Again, authors do a lot of things, but you wanna show how the author builds the argument. And so you've gotta identify the most essential things that the author is doing to build that argument. Sentence number three is about a key thing the author is doing in order to achieve some response for the audience. And so you want to think, what does the author want to achieve? How does the author want the audience to respond? This is what comes after the in order to clause. And then what is the main thing the author is doing to achieve that? Don't use verbs like informs. If you're tempted to do that, think about what the author is doing to inform. And remember that persuasion isn't really about making sure an audience knows things. It's about making sure an audience responds in some important way. Sentence four, he adopts a blank tone in order to persuade a very specific audience. What is the main type of tone? If this is a scholarly author article, then informative or scholarly, those aren't meaningful distinctions because you've already, that's assumed, you've already identified it as a scholarly article. Who is the primary audience for this text? How do you know? Where was it published? What kinds of things is the author assuming that the audience already knows? And you should develop the, who the audience is by providing an underlying assumption for the primary audience. What is the main thing that is gonna make this audience most likely to consider the argument. Now, when analyzing rhetorical strategies, make sure you're thinking about how the strategy makes the claim or argument more persuasive for the primary audience who believes those things. Primary audiences or rhetorical strategies are not entirely to inform. They may make something easier to understand, but your analysis needs to focus on persuasion because that is the primary goal of rhetorical strategies, makes the argument more persuasive, more appealing to the primary audience, that very specific audience who holds a set of assumptions. Start with a sentence that indicates the type of analysis, how it's persuasive. So the author uses um, compare and contrast, or the author compares this thing to that thing in order to show the logical distinction between these things, how one is different than the other. Or the author identifies examples that evoke emotions in the audience that make them consider this audience more um, effectively. That sentence didn't make sense, but I'm making stuff up on random things that don't actually exist. So focus on the analysis. Remember, all scholarly works use big names. So unless that big name is actually matters, that particular big name, don't name that as a strategy. Um, same thing with evidence. They're all using evidence. 
focus on how this particular type of evidence, this particular name, fake name, is persuasive. Remember, you've got to think, how will this particular primary audience respond to this strategy? You are targeting that primary audience. Now, again, and I'm done. If you want more feedback on these types of assignments, and it's very important that you understand this because your last essay of the semester is going to be on how do you build persuasion into a text? How will other authors do this for diverse audiences using diverse genres? And how are you as, a, as an author using that in your own papers? That's all I've got. Thank you so much.